The city of Philadelphia said it would happen today, and it did. The body cam video of the two police officers involved in the deadly shooting of Walter Wallace. Needless to say, it is difficult to watch, showing in graphic detail the officers pleading with Wallace to drop his knife, and finally the sound of gunfire that the officers felt they had to unleash. Live at Southwest Detective Headquarters is Action News reporter Bob Brooks. Bob, show us what you can of the body cam video. Jim, I will, but first I'm going to set the scene here at Southwest Detectives nearby where Wallace was shot. Take a look behind me here. They have barricaded this area in the building off, preparing for any potential unrest after this video airs. We've seen a lot of police officers getting on buses, going out into the city. But now, let's see that video. Here's the footage from the officer who approached Wallace's door. What's going on? And it instantly escalates. Put the knife down now! Walter Wallace Jr. walks out with a knife towards him. Both officers plead with him at least 11 times that I count to drop it. Put the knife down now! Put the knife down! Here's the angle from the second officer's body camera as Wallace then approaches him. Put it down! Put it down! Put the knife down! His mother runs out to stop him. Put the knife down! Get him! It doesn't work. And seconds later, one officer says, Shoot him. And they do. We stop the video as Wallace is shot. It's too graphic to show. He falls immediately to the ground. His mother runs to her son, screaming. Stop. The officers have now been identified as 25-year-old Sean Matarazzo and 26-year-old Thomas Munz. They both shot at Wallace at least seven times each. Immediately, neighbors huddle around him. The officer approached the door, runs to his car in an attempt to get Wallace to the hospital. Now tonight, we also have the 911 calls. They shaped the kind of situation the officers had most certainly prepared themselves for. One of the calls is from Wallace's sister. What's wrong there, ma'am? I'm, I'm, I'm the daughter to my mother and my father, and my brothers, they called the cops earlier, and the cops is not doing nothing. He's over there hitting my mother and my father, and I'm always and shouting. How old is your brother? Any weapons involved? No, but he got a, a um um a case of he on probation and everything. He got a case for um being violent and everything. He got a whole record. We also have this transmission from dispatch before they arrive. Yeah, just have the officers use caution to respond to that. This is a uh, an ongoing domestic issue going on up there. Okay, Jim, another live look here. You see officers getting on that SEPTA bus about to head back out into the city preparing for what could be more unrest in Philadelphia. We know there is a lot going on in the city, but we also want to say that though that video hard to look at, the Wallace family approved all of that footage before it made air. Now we're putting live in Southwest Philadelphia, Bob Brooks, Channel 6, Action News, Jim. Thank you, Bob. Let's go live to Action News reporter Dan Quayer, who's at the office of the Philadelphia District Attorney. Dan, what kind of reaction are you hearing to the body cam videos of the shooting? Jim, we have plenty of reaction. And in releasing those videos and 911 calls, officials say there are still a number of investigations underway. And they also announced a series of steps aimed at changing the way police respond to calls involving people with mental health issues. We understand that the materials released today will be very painful. Mayor Jim Kenney says they knew the release of these materials could provoke anger and rage. But transparency, he says, is necessary in making meaningful changes in Philadelphia. Seeing another life tragedy lost yet again to police violence can make many of us question whether anything has changed or whether anything will ever change. This is why we are releasing this footage. Because things have to change. In response, the FOP called a news conference an abomination. For the mayor to be using the term police violence when officers are out there every day fighting police violence, it's absolutely absurd. And we will fight. Meanwhile, outside City Hall, several hundred supporters of Black Lives Matter were outraged by what they saw on the police cam videos. If it can happen to Walter Wallace Jr., it could happen to any person in this city. For his part, District Attorney Larry Krasner would not say if he has impaneled a grand jury as part of his investigation. The decision to use a grand jury or not is very, very case specific and also protected by certain laws. So I'm not actually allowed to 
discuss the details of that. The city today also announced changes now underway or coming soon, such as incident de-escalation training for police, new training for dispatchers, and a joint effort with the Department of Behavioral Health to better coordinate response from crisis intervention teams or CIT officers. Additionally, Mayor Kenny, when asked what he is doing to secure funding to ensure all officers are equipped and trained on the use of tasers, says he's consulting with city council for a potential immediate transfer of money for that. Of course, we need to speed it up and make sure everybody has one is trained to use it. Right now, only 2,300 uh, tasers are deployed. Commissioner Outlaw says they need an additional 4,500 to get everyone equipped. Live at the DA's office, I'm Dan Coyar, Channel 6, Action News. Jim? Thank you, Dan.